I'm Dana Gentry, your Communications Director at SEIU. Today we're talking with Paul Aisley. He's running for Assembly District 41. Correct. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for inviting me in. So uh, the last session, as you know, was a brutal one for labor. What do you expect in 2017 and what can you do to stand up for working people? Well, if you check my record, you'll see I've been 100% pro-labor in my three previous terms. And I will do whatever I can for the workers, protecting, uh, what's the word for the amount that they charge locally, the prevailing wages. And protecting the, the prevailing wages for state employees, protect the retirement system, and any other item that I can work on, benefits, hours, overtime, whatever the issue is, I'll be glad to work with the group, the SCIU on those. So we should mention you were previously an assemblyman. Right, three terms. And then you lost in the... Red wave. <laughs> in the very, very small turnout <laughs> of 2014. Yes, yes. Uh, So how has that been for... What was, what was that like for you to sit on the sidelines during that session? Well, given the way the last session went, I was happy to not be there. <laughs> I think of it as a sabbatical. Okay. What are your legislative priorities for this coming session? Well, the big issue right now, in addition to what I've always done in the past, you can check on my record, those things, I want to work on problems for senior citizens. The senior population is growing, the elder abuse is growing, the um, several different items are coming up, the guardianship. I've been approached by an older woman who said that she lives in fear of someone coming in and taking her assets and her home away from her by saying she's not competent. So that is out there. Several people are working on it. I know Assemblyman Sisolak has been working on it. Uh, Commissioner Sisolak is working on it. And there are other people. Uh, Dan Roberts and Raina Goodman brought it to the attention of Seniors United. And from that point on, I've said I'm in on that. We can do legislation to help them. And uh, there are other things. There are other scams. Maybe you've heard of the one called the Hello Grandma scam where someone calls and says, Grandma, and Grandma has, is that you, Johnny, giving away the kid's name? The next line the kid says is, I'm in trouble, but you can't tell my parents. And this happened to a friend of mine, it cost her $9,000. How can you prevent that, though? You can't, you can just make people aware of it. And a friend, there's several issues, they called my house, and my, my wife said, well, you know, I'm not Grandma, I'm Nana, and they hung up. And another friend they called, she, she was suspicious and she said, what's your mother's maiden name? And they hung up. So you can prevent, but you have to be aware this person that fell for it is a pretty savvy person, or she was. I know you've been interested in juvenile justice issues in the past too. Um, do you think that juvenile offenders in Nevada should be allowed to accept or turn down a plea deal when they can't enter into any other kind of contract? If they fully are explained what the plea deal involves, what's for and against it for, I don't like the plea dealing in general because I think they end up agreeing that they've done something they haven't done. I think that happens for the older uh, criminals, habitual criminals. I don't think of kids, I really believe that there's a reason we have a juvenile court and juveniles should not be treated as adults. They are juveniles. And I've, I've seen and I've known people I'm not going to mention names, of course, but kids that have had a record of burglaries and ended up being a doctor and they've gone on. The kids are not fully formed. They should be treated as kids, not adults. Uh, you were very instrumental in getting medical marijuana dispensaries <laughs> made available after more than a decade's wait for the people who voted for that constitutional well, amendment. I put the bill in the first time and it got killed, it didn't go, then Tick Segaboon picked it up and he managed to get it through. So Tick is known as the father of marijuana. You're the grandfather. I'm the grandfather. Okay, so uh, how do you think that has been working out so far and how do you feel about the petition to legalize recreational use? Well, I'm certainly in favor of it. I don't like to penalize people for things that they are doing that are not harmful, they don't harm other people. And there's plenty of examples that recreational marijuana is a lot less harmful than liquor. And we've managed to work with liquor. We can certainly work something out. We have examples in Washington. We have examples in Colorado, California. There are things to do. There are benefits. We can empty out the prisons, not totally, of course, 
But remember, the prison cost is between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a year, and we give kids ten thousand dollars per person for the kids in the school district. I think those those priorities should be considered. But there are problems. There are a lot of problems with marijuana. There was a uh, radio program just now I listened to driving over this morning that we don't have a good standard for being under the influence and behind the wheel behind the wheel and being actually not able to drive because we know that the system will be the marijuana will be in your system and you will have capable capability and this guy suggested very good that we should check ability and not the level of stuff 